Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at 15 um, AWS networking interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, AWS. So whether you're preparing for an interview or you're just looking to enhance your skills on AWS, then this video is just for you. Uh, so in this particular video, we will look at some key concepts. Uh, we will look at some scenario based answers and also some practical use cases that will help you to uh, ace your next interview. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So the first question we have is what is Amazon uh, VPC and why is it important? So VPC is simply our virtual private cloud and we can use this to create our uh, uh, logically isolated section uh, in the AWS cloud. So whenever we um, uh, want to secure our resources, we can use this VPC to securely launch those resources and then also manage those uh, resources. It also provides us uh, control over our network configuration. So we can choose the uh, IP address ranges, the subnets, the route tables, the gateways, everything will be under our control. And this will ensure that the network is scalable. It is secure for our uh, workload. So you can simply think of this as your private space within the AWS cloud. The next question we have is explain the difference between a public and a private subnet in a VPC. So when we talk about your subnets uh, in VPC, we have two types. You have the public subnet and the private subnet. Now, generally, public subnet is basically where um, you will be creating your resources that needs to have uh, internet access and it makes use of your internet gateway. So public subnets are accessible from the internet through your internet gateway. And then you have the private subnets and this is where if you don't want to have uh, internet access then you can make use of your uh, private subnet so basically you will not be having any direct internet access and this is typically used for your uh, uh, internal resources like your uh, backend resources like your databases or your internal applications so public subnets will have internet access and your private subnets will not have uh, direct internet access the next question we have is how do you connect an on-premises data center to an uh, AWS VPC? So you have multiple options to connect to your uh, on-premises to your AWS network. So one option we have is your uh, VPN connections. Now that's your site-to-site uh, -site VPN that can be used for secure connections over the internet. Then we have AWS Direct Connect, which provides us a, a private and dedicated high bandwidth connection between AWS and on-premises. And then finally, we have the Transit Gateway. Now, this is mainly for large scale interconnectivity. And when you have multiple VPCs and networks to work with, you can make use of your Transit Gateway. So whenever we talk about connecting your on-premises with VPC, these are the options that you can mention. The next question we have is what is an elastic IP or EIP in AWS? So your elastic IP can be used when you want to have a static IPv4 address that can be associated with your AWS account that you can attach to your uh, EC2 instance or to a network in interface, mainly when you want to have a static public IP address. So these are static IPv4 addresses. So these are ideal for use cases where you need consistent public IPs for your resources like uh, ensuring reliable DNS configurations like you want to have a static IP for your EC2 instance then you can make use of your elastic IPs. Next question we have is what are the types of gateways available in AWS networking. So gateways plays a very huge role in VPC so we have the internet gateway and uh, this is simply used when you want to enable internet access. So when you have your uh, public subnets and you want to allow internet access, we make use of your internet gateway. Then you have the NAT gateway, which can be used to uh, provide internet access to your private resources like private EC2 instances. Then we have the transit gateway, which acts as a centralized routing for uh, connecting multiple VPCs and your on-premises network. And then we also have the VPN gateway, which allows you to connect your VPC with your on-premises network securely so these are the different different gateways you have so mainly you you may end up using the inter internet gateway and nat gateway and internet gateway is when um, you want to give internet access to your public subnets and nat gateway is when you want to give internet access to your private subnets the next question we have is what is the purpose of aws route 53 
Now, AWS Route 53 is AWS Scalable Domain Service. So it's basically your DNS service. So DNS, it stands for Domain Name Service. And we can also use it for Domain Name Registration. So it does not, just like I said, it does not just handle your DNS. It also supports, it provides various features like uh, latency based routing or uh, uh, health checks, failover, geolocation routing. And this makes it a very key component in uh, uh, making your applications um, uh, available globally. All right. So it helps you to route your traffic globally. And uh, with this, you can raise your domain and you can uh, host your applications all around the world by making use of the service. The next question we have is explain the role of security groups and NACLs in VPC security. So in VPC, when we talk about your security, there are two main firewalls that we can use. One is your security groups and this acts as your firewall at the instance level. And we can use this to control both your uh, uh, inbound traffic as well as your outbound traffic. And then you have the NACL. So NACL is the other option that is available. So NACLs also can be used as a firewall but then it operates at the subnet level and it provides you with a, a stateless traffic control, meaning uh, they inspect the traffic in both directions independently. So security groups are uh, firewalls at the instance level, NACLs are firewalls at the subnet level. The next question we have is how does AWS ensure high availability and scalability for VPC endpoints? So in VPC, when we talk about your endpoints, we have two types of uh, endpoints. We have the interface endpoints, which is used with your elastic network interfaces or ENIs. And then you have the gateway endpoints, which is like for your services like S3 and D DynamoDB uh, that you need to operate without needing public IPs. In that case, you can make use of your um, uh, gateway endpoint. So you have you know different different um, uh, endpoints and these are mainly used when you want to have a, a private network you don't want to make use of your NAT gateways and this can improve your security and also your performance by avoiding the public internet the next question we have is what is a peering connection in AWS VPC and how does it work so VPC peering is mainly used when you're working with uh, more than one VPC so it enables you to uh, establish a connectivity between two VPCs say uh, privately uh, even if they are across two uh, regions right so it mainly uses the AWS backbone network and there is no uh, transitive peering under this so like I said this is mainly used for private communication between two VPCs and um, it does not support any transitive connection so each pair of your VPC needs to have its own peering relationship. So you can create this peering connection only between two VPCs. So if you have more than two VPCs, then you will need to have that uh, peering between the other VPCs as well. So there's no transitive peering under this. The next question we have is what is AWS Accelerator? Now this service, it mainly helps us to improve the application performance and the availability of your application by routing the user's traffic uh, through AWS global network. So it does not make use of the public network. All of your traffic will be routed through AWS global network and this will ensure that you have low latency and high re reliability of your applications. So uh, under this, you'll have optimal endpoints through which your traffic will be routed and all of these endpoints will be within AWS network. So your traffic will never leave the uh, AWS network. And that way you'll have high availability of your application and also the performance of your applications will be much better. The next question we have is how do you implement disaster recovery for uh, AWS networking? So for disaster recovery, you have tools that you can use. So we have tools like uh, Route 53 um, for DNS failover. So we can make use of this uh, to fail over your uh, DNS. Then you have transit gateway or peering connections for uh, uh, redundant paths. You can also make use of direct connect gateway for uh, uh, cross region backup connections for high speed backup connections. You can make use of this. So you can, you can use these options in, in case of setting up disaster recovery for your uh, networking.
The next question we have is what is an ENI in AWS and when would you use it? So ENI, it stands for Elastic Network Interface and this is simply a virtual network card in your VPC. All right. So uh, you can make use of these ENIs when uh, you want to attach them to um, uh, uh, multiple EC2 instances, mainly for the high, high availability. Now, why do we do this? You know, uh, this can be in case of any uh, failures and you can also run multiple network configurations for one single EC2 instance like you want to enable multi homing or if an instance goes down you want to you, you can use the same ENI with other um, uh, instance or if one ENI goes down you can make use of other ENI so mainly making your uh, network highly available and it is simply a network card for your VPC so it, it contains all the network related information like your public IP, the private IP, the firewalls, all those informations. The next question we have is explain AWS Transit Gateway and its benefits. So like I've already mentioned, Transit Gateway, uh, it's, it's a very highly scalable hub and scope, hub and spoke model. And this helps you to connect multiple VPCs and also your on-premises network. So this helps you to simplify your networking by acting as a central routing hub for interconnecting multiple VPCs as well as your on-premises networks. Now, this is especially useful for large-scale architectures. So you'll have a centralized routing. It is very cost-effective and simplifies the management of your VPCs. The next question we have is what is the difference between NAT instances and NAT gateways? So before the NAT gateways were introduced, we had something known as NAT instances. Now these NAT instances are user managed EC2 instances and you had to manually set them up. So, you know, these are these NAT instances were basically EC2 instances that we had to create and we had to manually manage them. We had to manually configure the NAT on these instances. Now the NAT gateway, on the other hand, it's a fully managed service provided by AWS and uh, it's very highly available and it provides you automatic scaling and this makes it the most preferred option for most of your use cases so whenever we are talk talking about giving uh, internet access to your private subnets we make use of your NAT gateway the next question we have is how does aws support ipv6 in networking so aws vpc supports both ipv4 and ipv6 as well now how it does that so it makes you can make use of vpcs with the dual stack mode uh, you can make use of your direct connect for uh, uh, ipv6 you can also make use of your route 53 dns resolution for uh, ipv6 address now your ipv6 is ideal for application that requires a large number of public facing ips or you know basically where you need a large scale public addressing then you can make use of your ipv6 for that and that brings us to the end of our top 15 aws networking interview questions so whether you're preparing for your next next role or you're just looking to enhance your knowledge then mastering these concepts will give you a solid edge if you found this video helpful please hit that like button subscribe to the channel for more content uh, let me know in the comments which topic you would like me to cover uh, next until then, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.